Well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for Beat Week. This is our fifth year celebrating Beat Week, which recognizes the philanthropic legacy of William Polk Carey, our school's benefactor. Once again, we're delighted to have with us from the W.P. Carey Foundation, Chairman William Polk Carey II, and Chief Operating Officer Zachary Pack. In addition to leading the W.P. Carey Foundation, Will Carey is Senior Vice President of the Credit and Risk Team at W.P. Carey Inc., where he evaluates credit worthiness of companies in support of prospective sale leaseback and other financing transactions. Will is also a trustee of the University of Pennsylvania, which is one of his alma maters. Will is the grandnephew of our benefactor, William Poe Carey, and the grandson of Mr. Carey's brother, Francis J. Carey Jr., who led the Carey Foundation for many years and was instrumental in founding the Carey Business School at Johns Hopkins, the Francis King Carey School of Law at the University of Maryland, and the W.P. Carey School of Business at Arizona State University. Zach Pack is Managing Director at BDT & Company, LLC, a merchant bank that provides advice and long-term capital through its affiliated funds. The firm helps family and founder-led business, businesses pursue their strategic and financial objectives. The W.P. Carey Foundation is a private U.S. foundation that was founded by William Poe Carey. The foundation's primary mission is to support educational institutions with the larger goal of improving America's competitiveness in the world. Since its founding in 1990, the foundation has granted over $375 million to hundreds of institutions. Of course, the Johns Hopkins Carey Business School is a beneficiary of the Carey Foundation's generosity. In 2006, a $50 million gift from Mr. Carey led to the establishment of the Carey Business School. And this was and is the largest gift ever in support of business education at Johns Hopkins. The school was named after Mr. Carey's great, great, great grandfather, James Carey of Loudoun, which, who was a successful Baltimore merchant during the 18th and 19th centuries. In 2020, the W.P. Carey Foundation made another $25 million commitment to the school to recruit renowned faculty, enhance academic programs, and help launch student careers. This gift is being matched with commitments from Johns Hopkins University and contributions from other donors for a total of $50 million over the next several years. So I will start our conversation um, with Will and Zach with a few questions. And we've also invited three of our students to join us to ask their own questions, but we're also anxious to hear from our audience at large. So please feel free to submit your questions using the Zoom Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we'll try to get to them uh, during our program. So first of all, Will and Zach, uh, welcome. Great to have you both with us this morning or this afternoon, I guess. Well, thanks Dean Triantis, it's great to be here uh, and such a treat to, uh, very grateful that you and the Hopkins community are taking the time to recognize philanthropy this week um, and all, all the good that can be done um, when, when uh, Nonprofits can partner together, and schools can come come together and uh, support students. Thanks, Will. Zach, great to see you as well. Thanks so much for having us. We're really looking forward to today's meeting. Zach, I will let you know that uh, we had a bet whether you'd have a tie on or not, <laughs> and I gave two to one odds. And uh, Dean Triantis wouldn't take the counter, uh, but we did. Uh, Someone did, and, and uh, I am now one, I have one more dollar to my name. <laughs> Bill, Bill will be proud to hear that, that you won the bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, um, of Bill, regrettably, um, he passed away in 2012, and, and I um, never had the opportunity uh, to meet him. So, Will, I, I thought maybe it'd be the appropriate place uh, to start um, if you could Tell us a little bit more um, about him. Uh, you know, we, we all know the business he founded and we obviously know about his philanthropic uh, contributions, at least a, a number of them. Um, but maybe you could tell us more sort of what was he like um, as a person? Uh, what do you remember about him and, and what would you like people to know about him? Yeah, he, I, I think that Bill had, a, had a, a, an amazing life and, and had a huge impact on a, a, a lot of people. Uh, and I, a lot of that was due to his, his strong empathy and, and caring, caring nature. 
you know, when Bill was, um, when he was younger, he, he went to the Gilman school where he started out with, where Frank Carey also went to school, which is uh, not too far away from, uh, from Johns Hopkins campus. And, and before Gilman, he started at Calvert, which is right next door to Gilman's campus. Um, those two institutions in Baltimore as a whole had a huge impact on him uh, and the man he became. Um, when he was in Baltimore, he was selling uh, ink. And so he always had this sort of door to door. So he always had this sort of entrepreneurial spirit to him. And he continued that. He started off his after uh, Gilman and Pomfret, uh, where he went to boarding school briefly, he went to Princeton and kind of continued that entrepreneurial spirit in while at Princeton when he was selling, refriger buying refrigerators from seniors and then selling them to freshmen or leasing them to freshmen, um, either one. And, and it's really incredible because that sort of entrepreneurial spirit was then kind of honed in at, at the Wharton School. Um, as he, he joked uh, later on in his life, he was on, he was, very social and very friendly and uh, adored by all. And he was on spending a lot of time on his, his refrigerator business, probably too much time. So he was asked to leave at the urgent request of the Dean and found a home at Penn where he went to Wharton. And I think that, that, you know, having the, while he had sort of the innate ability and, and desire to be entrepreneurial by going to school and really learning business um, and how he could, you know, release that skill set. He then went on to um, he he went went on to sell uh, cars for a short period of time, and then went to found one of the or went to work at one of the largest investment banks at the time. And I, I think that he had a a pretty storied career, but a lot of that is because of you know he was compassionate about people too. Uh, he really cared. Something that he would regularly say is. Uh, about when talking about the success of WP Carey, which he founded, was um, that that one of the key pillars was have surrounding himself around people that were smarter than him. Um, so he was he was very humble and um, and uh, person, and which made it so that people loved to work with him, work for him. He was able to recruit and retain amazing talent because he was such a great uh, because he really cared. I don't know. Zach worked with him for a number of years, and I'm sure that he has uh, some some stories and feedback, too. Yeah, Zach, I was going to turn it over to you because, um, though not a family member, you you became um, close to Bill Carey. But also, just so everybody knows that you you had very close ties here at Hopkins. And in fact, you were the uh, you did your undergrad here and you were the student government president. So ta tell us a little bit about uh, how you met him and uh, how you got to know him well. Yeah, no, thank you. And again, thanks for thanks for including me in today's, uh, today's session. I think um, I was fortunate to get elected class president, and then, as you know, ultimately student body president. And in those days, they invited a number of the student leaders to meet with the trustees. And Hopkins then and now just has an incredible board of, of very committed and loyal supporters. Um, and at the time, Bill saw that I had a good working relationship with then President Brody and, and, and Provost Steve Knapp. And he sketched out this vision he had, which is I want to start a business school at Hopkins. I know it's going to be challenging to be a startup, but but I really want to do it. And would you come to work here, given you've got some good relationships at Hopkins to help me help me achieve that? And so it took some time, but that's ultimately what we did. Um, you know, at the outset, you 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 did meet Bill, but Bill was very thoughtful about writing both letters and memos about what he wanted to see in the business school. Um, he spent a lot of time studying this. He'd been a uh, he did an executive in residence up at Harvard Business School as he thought about crafting a, a startup. And when you when you define your career, it's exactly the type of dean he would want leading the school. He had this vision of someone. I want to recruit someone who's led a national business school, who's achieved a great deal, to come to Hopkins, take their learning, and 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 take take the uh, take a business school to the next level. And he had some terrific ideas around you know joint programming, drawing on the strengths of the university in medicine, in public health. He was a very uh, uh, big believer in, 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 in finding ways to access the best parts of Hopkins and leveraging that to enhance what, what would be the Cary Business School. And that, that goes back to memos Will and I've seen from you know literally almost 25 years ago. So it was something he cared about and thought about uh, a great deal. And I think he, if you were today, would be thrilled 
um, and, and incredibly grateful for not just your work and your team's work, but also the students that Hopkins has been able to attract today and the caliber and the quality of the students. Um, the other thing I just, just to switch gears, Will noted um, his concern for, for employees. And today we talk a lot about DNI and the importance of that. Bill was also incredibly ahead of the curve in that regard. He was very focused on building a very diverse uh, and inclusive team at the company at WP Carey when I, when I started there. And um, he would look out for employees as though they were members of his family. I'll, I'll never forget there was an employee, junior person accounting, her mother had a health issue. She came to see him and he called up, you know, the head of this department at the hospital because he was a donor to the hospital and said, can you help this person? I, I don't know how many CEOs of a public company would take that level of interest in someone who was perhaps not necessarily at the C-suite level, but Bill did, and he actually did that fairly routinely um, in terms of trying to help you know, whether it was writing a letter of recommendation for someone going to university or, or someone may have a health issue, if, if he could be supportive and helpful there. Um, it, it was an incredible dedication to his, to, uh, to the firm. And, and I think it set a great tone for, for the company. It carries over to um, how we think about the foundation as well. And I think it's a great lesson for those that are on the call that may one day start and build companies um, to think about your employees, not as, not as an employee, but as a partner and as a, as, a, as someone that, is an extension of you and, and, and your work. So um, in, in, in a lot of ways, Bill was very much out of his time. Thanks, Zach. And that, that actually um, lays sort of the, 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 the scene, uh, sets out the scene really well, because here we are um, celebrating a beat week. And, um, and, and those, that character um, that, that you described of him is very consistent with, with um, what, what led us to, to call this uh, beat week in the first place. So. Um, I don't know, Will, if you want to take on, we, we did provide the, the, the nice video that describes um, uh, what, what Bill did with the beet farmers um, at the outset of this week, but maybe not everybody's seen it. So maybe, Will, you could talk a little bit about uh, what, what Bill did with the sugar beet uh, farmers and uh, sort of what it showed about, again, about his character. Yeah, I'd be glad to. This is, uh, it's kind of fun. And I think that the overall theme that you'll see, we have two models at WP Carey. One is doing good while doing well. And the other is investing for the long run. And I think that both of those are hit pretty clearly here. Um, when, uh, so in the early 1900s, uh, I guess Bill's grandfather, uh, in, in terms of uh, to pay off a legal fee, had been paid in uh, 30, about a 30%, 30 to 40% ownership of this beet farm in, in Colorado. And uh, in uh, the 1960s, it was going, uh, the beet farm was going through a bankruptcy, a restructuring. And um, Bill, although he was a min minority shareholder, wasn't and wasn't actively involved in the business, um, the, there was a number of beet, beet farmers that, that either contributed beets, contributed time, and never got paid for, for their services. Uh, about 80 or 90 of these beet farmers just sort of were left high and dry. And years and years later, so it was 1966 to 1987, Bill felt, uh, you know, Bill at, by 1987 had founded WP Carey, uh, you know, over 10 years and had, had started to have some, some real material success in his career. And it's something that I think in that hitting investing for the long run, Bill never forgot about, um, you know, while he wasn't ne necessarily responsible for it, he never forgot that these farmers were, were sort of not, not paid. Uh, so he went and um, he found out uh, through the bankruptcy records and, and uh, who, who, was, who were the farmers and, and made payments to all of them. Uh, it was about $250,000 in, in 1987. And uh, it was so touching that, that um, 60 minutes had done a piece on bill and and time and and he was really he didn't uh sort of get anything out of it other than just that it was doing the right thing which is oftentimes what guided the you know bill i mean that was sort of as zach is saying in this the esg framework is really thought of now um but doing the right thing can oftentimes be sort of a guiding compass of true north and um and that's what bill did so um, years later, he paid 
paid farmers um, in Colorado, and they were incredibly grateful for his support. And I, I guess that that's the the driver, as uh, uh, Mick has said in the comments, that's the driver for calling it Beat Week, and um, which is really fun. It, it's a sort of um, name of a week that people have to ask you, like, why is it called Beat Week? So it's great, a great opening into the story. So Zach, I want to ask you, um, you know, Will mentioned that Bill was famous for his quote, uh, doing good while doing uh, well. And, and he, he, he did both, right? He was very successful. He was also very generous. And um, I'm curious sort of what, what you see um, and, and what we can all learn as business leaders or future business leaders, our students listening in, uh, what can we learn from Mr. Kerry's example? And I know you also work uh, very closely with, with um, some very successful and very generous um, business people as well. So what are, what are your thoughts in terms of what you're seeing um, in terms of philanthropy and what we can learn from, from these examples? Yeah, I think that's, that's a great question. You know, one thing that was um, unique to Bill is he felt such a incredible debt of gratitude to all the educational institutions that he touched, whether that was undergrad at Princeton and then ultimately Wharton. Um, and, and he felt tremendous loyal to the Hopkins given his family was involved in the first board founding the first and founding of the university and the hospital. But I think it, it is recognizing that what success we have um, in life, both, both commercially and personally, is not just our own, but it is shared success. And I think that uh, Bill felt a tremendous sense um, of obligation to those institutions that had touched him personally and had, had uh, lifted his career to, to heights that, that were you know, seemingly unimaginable when he, when he started out and said he had you know, something like ten thousand dollars. He's some amount of student debt. You know, even when he, when he graduated, and yet he he went on to achieve these great things, and he had um, a real loyalty to to the institutions. And so I think that's, you know, if you get your MBA at at, at Cary or or you have some other connection to Hopkins, um, I do as an undergraduate. Um, it, incredibly important to to give back and to stay active and to help that next generation. The other thing that that Bill did, I think, better than anyone was he was incredible. And I say this in the best in the best possible term networker and he wanted to connect other people so he hosted receptions for Hopkins students that were undergrads that were part of the what was then called the WP Carey uh, minor in entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and management and would invite all of these uh, various leaders in finance to a reception in January to try and network both juniors and seniors to help them get you know uh, positions on, on Wall Street and in finance after graduation he personally was incredibly rigorous about maintaining his network. Um, he'd gone to Princeton with uh, an incredibly impressive class, including uh, former Secretary of State, James Baker, former Secretary of the Treasury, but he maintained those relationships all throughout his life and, and would host dinner for folks that would help um, you know, Secretary Baker others in their career at certain points that were, that were important to them. I think that's another great life lesson for, for the MBA students is that this network is not just for someone that you're doing a, a project with, for this week or the semester, but you know, build on these relationships because they can transform both your both your career and your life. And so that's something that Bill did, I think, extraordinarily well. There was another life lesson uh, that we all take that both the foundation and company employees took away from from working uh, with and around him. Thanks, Zach. And we may we may come back to the networking uh, question a little bit later if we have time. I, um, Sticking on, on the philanthropy um, theme, uh, you know, many, many of our students watching today um, won't be able to make um, multi-million dollar uh, gifts like the Cary Foundation has, at least, at least not yet, um, hopefully at some point in their, in their future. Um, but we know that the giving really is important um, regardless of, of the scale of, of the giving. So I thought, uh, g given our focus this week um, with Beat Week on philanthropy, maybe each of you could share your um, first experience as best you can remember uh, with, with philanthropy, philanthropy and, and how it shaped uh, your vision for your involvement with philanthropy. Will, you want to start us off? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. And I, I think that oftentimes with, with philanthropy, you know, it, it's at least the way that I've, I've seen it is to, to have a passion, figure out what your personal passion is, and hopefully that will sort of you know, guide you to what you, you're doing. You know, I think oftentimes in the beginning, a lot of philanthropy is, and, and giving can be, can be time. Uh, you know, you start to get involved in an organization and the more and more involved and engaged you get with it. Um, you know, if, 
if that organization is sort of a match, then you end up spending more time and they, it's sort of, they're asking for more input and you're giving more input. And then all of a sudden you can start figuring out areas where the organization has a need um, and that, you know, uh, that you're also passionate about. And it's an area where, you know, whether you're making a multi-million dollar gift or a few thousand dollars that can really make a difference or a few hundred dollars, uh, maybe even it's even tens of dollars, but um, they can make a difference towards something that you're personally passionate about. And you can then see that sort of grow. Um, I think that that's really impactful. Uh, you know, we see it, for instance, at Hopkins, I, I think Bill saw it very clearly. He was, you know, very passionate about Baltimore and about Johns Hopkins and about, um, and also about business and teaching business education because it's it was so you know so beneficial to him he saw what education could do um, for his career and for him him uh, both on the personal and and uh, and professional side so um, that's when he sort of with a lot of help from Zach and um, and you know continued continued efforts bill was very vigilant about really wanting a business to put business at hopkins to really help elevate baltimore as a whole um and you know give back to the baltimore community that i think that things like that that has was bill's way of of doing that a lot of my early uh giving i think was at a very micro community level um you know whether it's uh you know, supporting a, a, a local school that I, I, I do uh, or have done in the past, you know, whether it's your high school, your preschool, some of those, those community days were my probably early, early stages. Um, and have since, you know, continued the effort with uh, at a slight, at a larger scale with, uh, with that foundation. And it's fortunate that, that both our passions kind of are, are aligned um, to, uh, to, you know, well, I didn't go to Hopkins and I didn't grow up in Baltimore. I'm uh, very passionate about it. And it's, it's great to see the impact that we can have when we partner together, um, especially with great, great folks like Zach. And I saw that another um, Juliana uh, Harris is Baltimore from Baltimore and, and um, is our executive director and, and being able to work with them um, that have, have really known Bill for so long and been, um, been able to sort of help, you know, while Bill's no longer here, still continue to perpetuate the, his mission and goals and values. Thanks, Will. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great that, that you all are really able to, um, that you're well aware of the legacy that he wanted to leave and are able to make that come to life. Um, Zach, what about you? Thoughts on, on your philanthropy? Well, it, it's guided by something uh, that we learned from, from Bill, and it was from a, a former trustee since passed from the W.P. Perry Foundation, a gentleman named Larry Klein, who was Nobel Laureate of Economics in 1980. And, and again, Bill being a great connector and networker, recruited Larry to the foundation board. But um, one of the things that, that Bill asked Larry is, what's the key to future economic success? And he said, it's the education of the young. And so that's where Bill wanted to make his foundation focus. And, and, and you know, we, we often think about that in monetary terms. But personally, I found both volunteering hosting events, bringing people together, you know, you don't have to have unlimited resources to make, to make a huge impact. Uh, I think Mike Bloomberg's first contribution to Johns Hopkins, uh, Greg will know the answer to this, but I think it was something like $5 when he was a alum in 1964, 1965. Now Hopkins has done <laughs> well by that initial investment over the years. But the point is, is, you know, initial investments, be they monetary or one's time can ultimately lead to huge, huge impact. And, um, I think that that's uh, a really important lesson that we've seen from the Hopkins community and one that, that Bill shared and, and um, you know, our own individual philanthropy is, is, is driven by the guiding principles that we saw from, from Bill and his brother Frank uh, at, the, at the WP Carey Foundation. Yeah, thanks, Zach. And we, we often talk in the world of philanthropy about time, talent, and treasure. And you're absolutely right that um, they're all important and not just the treasure piece. And they often go very, very hand in hand in terms of, um, as, as Will also, you pointed out, sort of um, the putting, putting your money where, where the passion really is overall and, and putting, the, putting the time and talent is also uh, critical. 
Um, well, great. I, we have actually um, three students uh, that uh, have uh, questions for you to, to pose directly. So um, Mick Byrne, uh, who's one of our Flex MBA students about to graduate. Mick, um, I'll give you the, uh, the shot at the first question. Thanks so much. Uh, so thank you both also appreciate you being here uh, today to, to discuss really appreciate the discussion so far. Uh, I'll give a quick introduction. So like I said, my name is Mick Byrne. Uh, I'm the flex program. I expect to graduate actually next month. So very excited. Uh, I just accepted a position uh, as a senior technical product manager, it's kind of a mouthful uh, at Amazon uh, based out of their HQ2 over in Arlington, Virginia. I uh, expected to start right after graduation. So just going through onboarding and everything right now. Uh, my question for you uh, is sort of the short version of it is what made you choose Hopkins? So to elaborate, uh, Hopkins, I think, is, is known uh, for its leading research hospital. Uh, it's world renowned applied physics lab, cutting edge engineering facilities. But why start a business school here of all places? I have my opinions, and my thoughts, but I really want to hear yours. Zach, do you want to? Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna take this. You, you were uh, with Bill when he was making these these thoughts. These thoughts. Yeah, Bill. Bill's view was he grew up in Baltimore in a period when Baltimore was really preeminent. It was a far more uh, important city, frankly, than Washington D.C. And for a variety of reasons related to you know the decline in, in in shipping rail and steel industry, you know Baltimore had 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 suffered some setbacks. He wanted to return and wants to return Baltimore to the glory that it experienced historically. Um, as such a key key city in the, in, the, in the country's history. And he thought the key to doing that was establishing a business school and having entrepreneurs who would then stay in the area and start jobs or work for great companies like Amazon, as an example, um, and who could make a, a, a contribution to the greater Baltimore and ultimately Baltimore, Washington region. And so, but his particular focus was, was Baltimore. And I think that's, that's what drove it. It's, it's an amazing sense of loyalty to one's hometown um, that he felt. And he was extraordinarily proud of, of being from Baltimore. The family, you know, goes back, the ties to the city go back to the 18th century. In fact, the, the, the business school named for, for James Carey of Loudon, he'd served on the first city council of Baltimore. He was the first chairman of the first bank of Maryland. Um, so it, it's, you know, he, he had this great mission, which was to look back at his family history and honor the legacy of his family and the contributions that they've made to Baltimore and Maryland, but also to look forward and see how it could have, how, how could have a transformative effect on the community going forward um, and, and have a, the uplift that he hoped to see because he, he knew Baltimore's history and he wanted the future to be as, as bright as, as, as he remembered his, his youth. And so that was really the, the goal with, with, with starting the, uh, the business school there. And you see great companies like Under Armour, as an example, um, you know, ha have such a tremendous impact on the, the greater Inner Harbor area and be, and, and, and be located there. I think what we're what we're hoping for, and I know Bill would be hoping for, is there's the future alums of the of the Carey Business School. Uh, perhaps after a few years at Amazon, you're starting your own business, and that you might consider locating it uh, in or around Baltimore. Um, that's that was Bill's uh, Bill's vision and dream, and uh, I think we're we're getting closer to it every day with, given the the, the quality and the caliber of the students um, that the Carey Business School is able to attract. I don't know, Will, if you want to add to that in any way. Yeah, I, 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 I totally agree. And I think that the only thing I'd add is that, uh, you know, in that interdisciplinary side of, uh, well, first off, Mick, thanks so much. It's, and congratulations. Um, and then um, I, I would just say, you know, Bill really was focused on interdisciplinary education and whether that was through, um, you know, business and health or business and uh, political science, or, you know, there's a number of different ways um, that it, when you have a sort of a business mindset and you can apply it to you know that skill set that way of thinking to you know a different field of expertise and Bill there's no doubt uh, in anyone's mind Hopkins is preeminent as you noted in a number of fields and an area that was um, had had room for growth obviously there was no no business school existing in in what was a you know, very liberal arts uh, college at the time. Um, and so by leveraging a lot of Hopkins strengths, um, you know, Bill saw that there was an opportunity to, to really teach interdisciplinary thinking. And, and that I really think changes the world. And um, the other piece of it is that Bill was very proud of, you know, his roots. Um, and the, 
as Zach noted, the um, having family that were founding members on the board of Johns Hopkins um, was a, a key driver. Bill really was proud of that. And uh, a, a gentleman who Zach and I uh, have, have remained very close with to this day, Morris Offit, who's former chairman of, of, uh, of Johns Hopkins, introduced, you know, noticed the connection and thought that Bill would be such a perfect fit on the board of trustees at Hopkins. And that ultimately, I think through Morris and Bill and, and the connection there is when Bill really saw that, um, you know, his passion, kind of what I was getting at earlier, his passion of business and passion of Hopkins could kind of come together um, and, um, and create this wonderful school. Thanks, Will. And for, for those of you that study down in, um, in DC, uh, you may know the Bob building and Morris Offit is the, is the O in Bob. It's the Bernstein Offit building. And there's a great, great photo of, of Morris and, uh, and his buddy Bernstein um, in, in the entrance there. So he, um, it's great to see that every time I, I go into that building. Um, so so thank Mick. Uh, thanks, Mick, for the question. And, um, and Heather, uh, Heather Later is one of our Mamba uh, students, and I think you had a question as well, if you could uh, share with Will and Zach. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. As the intern just said, I'm, my name is Heather Later. Um, I am a first year in the dual degree program, getting the MA and MBA in design leadership. Um, thank you so much for sharing your passion with us today and giving us a little bit of history. Uh, so just, oh, and this summer I am, so I'm, since I'm a first year, this summer I'm going to be interning as a, as a design strategist. Uh, with Gensler Consulting Studio out of the New York office. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and so thank you so much for about learning about the history and learning more about Bill. It's been really wonderful. And I, as a dual degree student, really appreciate the inter interdisciplinary thinking. Um, but looking forward, you know, the Cary Foundation has given so many transform transformational gifts over the past few decades. And I would love to hear from your perspective, what you think the foundation's ambitions and biggest impact opportunities are in the next upcoming years, five, 10, or future? Well, that is that a great one. question. <laughs> um, and and uh, thanks for the question. It, and congrats on, on Gensler New York. They're a phenomenal firm. Um, my, uh, we, they, they did uh, WP Carey's interior fit out for our office in New York City. So we're very familiar with them. Um, we, you know, I think that the great thing what Bill did in structuring a foundation that has sort of a perpetual life to it is that uh, he gave a, a great deal of flexibility to uh, to be able to sort of pursue these passions, but with with a lot of really great guidelines. Um, and we're fortunate that you know folks uh, like Zach and and Juliana, as I mentioned before, and our trustees are all able to kind of continue to provide that guidance and stay really close to Bill's mission of business and legal education um, ec and economics education and um, sort of leverage that to a next phase. I, I think that where we see a lot of critical issues are, and, and one thing too about us as a partner is we really do like to be a, a full partner with the organizations that we, we support. So you know, very regularly when organization, when not, you know, schools that we support or, or uh, organizations, folks that we support are, are performing at high levels, we're very likely to kind of continue supporting those organizations. But when, when thinking about what, what we were looking to address, I, I really do think that it's, you know, staying true to some of the points that we've made on this call, which are, you know, Baltimore is a key issue. We've got um, that, I look at as, as an addressable point for the next few years. Um, we really want to, and are in the early stages, and actually someone from uh, Hopkins' own community will be helping Noreen, uh, us in, in sort of framing um, that while staying true to what we've done in the past, um, thinking about ways that you know, the, the foundation and we can support entrepreneurship and business building and education in Baltimore um, through a sort of more more specific organ uh, targeted towards a geography. Um, but I think uh, another area that we've been um, interested in and it's right in Hopkins uh, wheelhouse is, is 
the business of health education, um, which has been uh, very interesting. And we can see with, you know, COVID and, and all, you know, we're really at a point where we're breaking through on big data and other, other areas within healthcare education. So that's another area that um, we have a lot of passion about for the next several years. But um, Zach, I, I would love to hear um, if, do you have any other thoughts? No, no I, I, I just think we, we want to invest in those institutions we know best that are having tremendous success. And I know Bill would be thrilled to hear uh, the position you've got with, with Gensler and, and, and Nick's position with Amazon. You're going to the best firms in their respective areas and that would make him incredibly proud. And so we want to invest behind the success um, of an institution that we partner with. And that's, that's true for Hopkins, it's true for some of our other partnerships as well. But um, it's, it's really to how do, we, how do we provide resources in order to help every institution we partner with go to the next level. And um, Hopkins and Carey just have a tremendous trajectory today, um, thanks to the students uh, like, like you all on the call and, and Dean Chance's leadership. And so building on that success is really where we're focused on, as opposed to some entities trying to do new things and, and, and go into a lot of different areas, which is you know, certainly worthy as well. But we think we will do best by investing in those, those that we know, um, know so well. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thanks, Heather. Appreciate the question. Uh, also, have a question from uh, Arbaz Hashmi. Ar Arbaz, there you are. Thank you, Dean Friandis, for this opportunity. Uh, hello, Will and Zach. Thank you so much for this wonderful session. Uh, I'm Arbaz Hashmi, as Dean mentioned, first year full time MBA student. Uh, been a partnership specialist for a decade now in the fintech space, and uh, will be interning in the wealth management sector at Adpar this summer. Uh, here's my question for you. Uh, we know the foundation's mission to supporting institutions with the goal of improving America's competitiveness in the world, as Dean Triantis mentioned at the start of the session. And we've also heard about so many wonderful contributions of the Cary Foundation across the U.S., especially in places like Baltimore and New York. Uh, however, speaking as an international student at Cary Business School, uh, could you please you know, uh, talk a little bit about how the work of the foundation or the company has a global impact and uh, maybe share your thoughts on educating future business leaders who would go on to be global citizens. Thanks, Arbaz. Uh, who wants to take that first? Well, do you wanna, do you wanna start and I'm happy to fill in? Sure, yeah, I think that there's, Bill, I think was, was very focused at an early stage of having, you know, global business leaders and uh, in, in the, you know, there, uh, the, through schools, there's, there's a number of initiatives that are either, you know, I think nowadays, especially where we see either international students coming onto campus and studying. Um, and I think that, or we, or also campuses going and expanding um, uh, in, in other regions, um, whether it's a satellite or, you know, what we're doing here, we're all in, in different locations and able to, uh, to sort of communicate and, um, and education's done the same. I, I think that when we think about our impact globally, you know, it really is that. It's the ability to, um, you know, partner with organizations that are, are making, you know, global impact. And, you know, I know that um, the impact that we've had through multiple schools um, has, been, has been quite global. I think, you know, both with Hopkins and uh, the diversity of the class that's that's coming and and where everyone's going and um, you know it, uh, I don't know Zach if you have any yeah. other, well, other I, I'll, I'll tell just one one quick anecdote and then we'll but Will's uh, grandfather Frank Carey came to WP Carey in 1987 and he led the Reed Smith office a very successful law firm um, based in, uh, out of Philadelphia but shortly after arriving Bill shared with uh, with Frank that he was going to go on international tour and he literally took time off to travel the globe in order to better understand not just from a from a you know spending a few days in in london or Paris or, or, or wherever it may be but to truly become a, a, a global citizen and um he did he did an enormous job a uh, phenomenal job rather networking as he went around the globe and so um i remember when i first joined one of our assignments was to open a uh, a wp carry office in in mumbai and we we went on a lengthy trip um, and because of Larry Klein, our efforts earlier, we were able to meet the finance minister 
um, of India, which which is a great thrill for for Bill and and, uh, and our trustee, then trustee Larry Fine. But I think that global thinking, global perspective, historically from Bill and from Frank, also informs our giving because um, we're obviously living in a, in a very global economy. And in order to attract the best students, we need to have those resources that, that we can provide those institutions we support to bring in students from all over the globe and, and to continue that perspective um, that, that students from, from around the world uh, can bring to carry and the other institutions we support. So I, I would say it's an, it's an incredibly important focus, but it, it doesn't just come from Will or the board or, 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 or the members of the team today. It, it, it's driven from, from really understanding Bill's legacy um, and, and, and the import that Bill felt. He, he, he knew in order for WP Carry to grow as a company, he had to expand, expand globally. We started with a London office I think um, I want to say in the mid '90s, that was the first expansion of WP Carry internationally. But um, he had he had uh, been doing deals internationally uh, for a very long period of time. He brought the first, as he would be the first to tell us on this call, right? Well, he he brought the first foreign direct investment into Australia in 1964, um, something like that. He was you know just 34 years old, and he dealt with one of the largest property owners in Australia, a gentleman named Giannis Hooker. Um, so. Bill had always had a global perspective and, and um, it's something extremely important to him. And so therefore, you know, he would know that, that for a business school to be successful, it has to maintain that, has to attract students from all over the world. And, and that's incredibly important to us given, uh, given his legacy. Yeah, I think that that's a great point, Zach. I mean, since WP Carey has invested in 31 countries and, um, but Bill was extremely proud and I think it really did sort of put him on the map, uh, you know, in the beginning, when Bill founded WP Carey, uh, but just prior, he founded a company called International Leasing Corp. Um, and I, I think that Bill had global ambi ambition, even at a, you know, when sometimes it wasn't quite glo as global as, as the name could have, you know, when he started out, he didn't have any deals done anywhere, let alone uh, internationally. So, um, but he was very proud of that that first deal that he did. That was a first foreign direct investment, um, and it got it made headlines across the world for the, you know the United States making a first foreign direct investment in in Australia. And I think it's also neat the way that he did it was partnering with, uh, um, as Zach had noted, L.J. Hooker, uh, who was a, a local from that region, and and really making it so that it was a true partnership where. There's an American investor partnering with, you know, a native um, Australian, and and uh, that really did that investment alone. I think Bill Bill thought that it really helped put him on the map as a as a global financer. So I think that we will I we will continue to try to and I think succeed in making a global impact. And sometimes it's a second degree impact if that makes sense, where we may not be supporting organizations as much on the foundation and philanthropic side that are, are international. But I think that it's clear that we have this uh, second degree impact um, uh, on, on, uh, on the giving. Uh, and Thank you so much for that comprehensive answer. I really appreciate that. Thanks, Arbaz. Appreciate your question. And um, we, we do have a question in, um, in through our Q&A. And um, it's interesting, you, you've mentioned now the word networking has been mentioned uh, several times. And um, Will, I think you'll probably um, share my view on this, that um, on the call here, we have one of the best networkers that exists, uh, which is Zach. Um, so Zach, I think this, um, I'll tell you what the question is in a second, but I'd love to hear sort of your thoughts um, that you can share uh, with our students on um, the power of networking and how best to do that. But we also um, uh, have, uh, as part of our audience, not only students, we have uh, Eddie Tuvin who uh, asked this uh, particular question regarding um, networking uh, with folks at WP Carey about employment. So I, so Will, we'll let you answer that, <laughs> answer that as well. But let, let's start off first uh, with, with Zach's thoughts on and advice on networking. Well, thank, thanks for the question. I think that uh, when I first moved up here, for, and as a Hopkins alum, it was just a natural fit to try and gather other Hopkins alums. And what was fascinating is how many different areas they're working in. They're working in government and finance and medicine. And that was really key to, to introducing me. I didn't know 
hardly anyone in New York um, outside of the folks at, at Tony P. Carey. But it was that Hopkins alumni network that really helped both personally and professionally. Um, ultimately married a, a woman with Hopkins class of 03, Amy, now Amy Pack. Um, and I would not have had that connectivity but for the, the Hopkins alumni network. And so um, in any event, it's, it's both important, obviously, personally, but professionally as well. And what I suggest is, you know, take those that you went not just to, and, and, and Bill was great about this, not just college or, or business school with, but he would even go back to his high school and grade school relationships. And he would throw parties and events just to bring everyone together. And, and what was fascinating was by doing that, sort of the flywheel effect it had on, on people's lives and careers was, um, was, was remarkable. As I mentioned, um, Bill opened a London office in the 90s. He would throw this huge party and invite hundreds of people. And, and, and it really helped the WP Carey brand become known um, successfully both, both in the UK and on the continent in a way that he couldn't have done you know, in, in any other way. And so, but he was able to do that because he kept in touch with folks at every point in his life. And um, I've tried to follow that uh, as well. Keep in touch with folks in every point of your life. You know, you never know when you may be able to do something for them um, or their families or, and, and vice versa. And I think that that's, um, it, it was the, really the first lesson I learned at, at, uh, at WP Carey working for Bill and Frank, Bill's, Bill's grandfather, and um, they did it better than anyone. One, one other point that, that we'll remember fondly, Bill used to also host a, a tree lighting party. The offices historically were in Rockefeller Center. And again, he would invite everyone he could going back to his grade school friends, um, up, to, up to those he was doing business with. And it was amazing just the, the not just personal benefit uh, and, and joy he felt doing that, but also the professional benefit, um, the commercial benefit to, to the firm as well. And so I think that's, it's just, uh, it's, it's important to keep that, in, keep that in mind. Thanks, I appreciate it. Um, Will, uh, your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think that Bill, Bill was a un, uniquely gifted in this area as is Zach. Um, in, in just, you know, keeping up with friends and being a good friend. Uh, I think networking is kind of this widely used term, but, um, you know, a lot of it is, 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 you know, being there when people need you as a sounding board advice, uh, you know, and offering, um, con, you know, good advice in, in an area or, you know, helping out when a friend's in need. Um, I think that, you know, to that end, Bill also would love to have host people for parties, have dinner and, um, and getting together like-minded people, um, was, was always a thing that Bill was trying to do. And, uh, um, is a great way to both have, have fun, um, when you're getting together with friends or, you know, friends and introducing friends of friends for dinner. Um, but also sometimes, uh, things like that are, uh, where ideas to found businesses come from. Um, and you never know when those opportunities will come and uh, who you'll meet. Um, so I, I think that that, and then it's, it's uh, Eddie, I, uh, it's good to see your question on WP Carey Inc. Um, we've got a, a great firm that's in, in New York City uh, headquartered and also has a, an investment office in London an asset management office in, in, uh, in Amsterdam. And um, we, you know, uh, we have a, a regular hiring uh, process and, and uh, opportunities are, are up on our, our website. Um, but if there's ever any, any questions about how to get a hold of, of uh, WP Carey, let, let uh, the career service office know or us know, um, we'd be happy to help. It's, um, we do have, we were recently rated as being one of the best places to work, which is something that I think Bill would be really proud of um, among uh, of all the accolades. I, I think that that one would probably be uh, one of the, one of our highlights um, being a place where uh, I know I love, I'm invited to a lot of colleagues weddings and they're invited to mine. We're invited to mine. And, you know, when, when you have a, an, a work environment like that, where I often am referring my colleagues as friends, not colleagues. And that's, that's, I, I think that that's something that we're very proud of and was, was made possible by Bill. And, and well, if I can, I can just add one thing to that, you know, now, particularly now with, with email, everyone is inundated with, you know, one thing that, that Bill did well that I tried to follow his lead on is he would send personal notes to everyone he met, you know, in, in whether it's philanthropic related, commercial related, 
he was incredibly focused on 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 maintaining contact and not just doing it with an email that could get lost, but through personal handwritten notes. And um, I think it's even more valuable today as you think about building you know relationships to the, the handwritten or personal note goes an incredibly long way toward toward building relationships. It's something he was uh, he was very good at. Well, thank you both for those answers. And I, I think they're, they're both um, excellent answers in terms of sort of defining networking as, as building those, those friendships and the support network and not, not so much uh, sort of the way that it's often thought about in business as uh, somebody who can help you. Uh, so I really appreciate those, uh, you sharing those uh, perspectives. Uh, we've covered a lot, lot of ground. One, one um, piece that we haven't touched on, which I think would be very helpful to, uh, to hear from you both, is that um, you know the, the recent gift that I mentioned um, from, from the foundation, um, part of that is supporting the James Carey Distinguished Professorships. And these will really increase the impact of our cutting edge and interdisciplinary um, research, including research related to the business of health, as we call it, uh, which really is an area of distinction uh, for us. So I'm curious if you could sort of trace back a little bit the roots for us of, of why the business of health uh, was important to Bill Carey and therefore to the foundation. Zach, do you want to take this one? Yeah, I, I think it's a great question. I think it really grew out of his experience uh, as an executive in residence at Harvard Business School, where they said, listen, today, you know, our endowment is excellent. It's going to be very hard for you to start a school and go head to head. But the way to, to jumpstart Hopkins to, to, to the greatest extent possible is leverage the existing strengths of the university across medicine and public health, but also have a, you know, also a diversity. Hopkins got, has so many strengths that Scott obviously a tremendous school in international relations, tremendous strength in nursing. There, there's so many strengths across the nine divisions, uh, but, but the key to, to, to leveraging you know, the Hopkins uh, brand as, as, you, as, as, you, as you learned at HBS was building these cross-divisional partnerships. And so medicine being the strongest you know, brand, you know, probably, probably the country, uh, Hopkins Medicine uh, has and maintains from, from when Bill was writing those, those, those memos, but, I think the uh, the cross discipline education was incredibly important in order to to get Hopkins, Johns Hopkins, and Jared Business School to the level that Bill want, wants it to be and wanted it to be. And um, I think he'd be thrilled with with where it is because it's drawn on existing strengths of of, of the broader institution. Thanks, Zach. Um, well, well, I got I guess another question if, because we're almost out of time here. Um, so. Um, we, uh, Zach was talking sort of about the brand uh, reputation of the university and now uh, the business school as well. Um, when I when I look at the foundation or when anybody looks at the foundation, um, you know, you one might think, well, this is just an entity that gives out money. But in fact, you all are structured in a very serious sort of business organizational way where um, you've created a brand, you've created a strategy, and you've really stuck to that strategy in terms of, of how you invest your money. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit sort of about, about how you do that. How do you really keep um, uh, straight to, to, the, the, to the mission and, and, and keep a very refined strategy when it may be in, in, in the business that, you, that you're in through the foundation easy to deviate away from that strategy when folks come at you with all sorts of requests? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. And, and we have a lot of worthy requests, but I think that as Zach noted earlier, you know, we have the benefit of really knowing, uh, I think it's that when we focus, uh, and I don't want to say narrowly, because I think it's our focus is, is, is not very narrow, but when we focus on what we think and where we think we can make a, a great impact, I think that we can have a, a better impact. So I, a lot of found, you know, when Bill passed away there, I think that Bill was just uniquely passionate about a lot of these areas, but there wasn't necessarily a, a framework. Uh, so what one of the things I was focused on and um, was creating sort of understanding our history um, and using a lot of data analytics and just to, to look at what we've done in the past. Some of it's just reading, you know, Zach noted about these letters, just sort of being a student of history, reading previous letters, a lot of time working with Bill and Frank and understanding their, you know, how they think about uh, certain challenges. Um, and then, and then creating a framework around that. I, I think that, um, you know, 
we've been particularly lucky and fortunate to have a uh, continuity of, of a team uh, where we have our, our trustees that have been around a long time. Um, and Zach as a, you know, a, a valued member of our team and, and the, the continuity of having, and Juliana, the continuity of having that unique team that's stayed together for so long has really helped us to all, um, you know, figure out what our core vision was and has been, and then how can we sort of look at tools and create tools to make sure that we're sticking to that. And, you know, while there is uh, oftentimes, I think uh, in this area, you can make judgments based solely on your heart. I think that we've also taken a fairly pragmatic approach of using, you know, quantitative uh, ranking systems and things like that. Now, we would never rely solely on the quantitative ranking, um, but I think it's a nice tool to have as we sort of think about how, well, you know, how would this be thought of in, in a sort of more analytical and rigorous framework. Um, so it's, uh, I think that that's uh, how we've sort of thought about it. Um, right. Um, thanks so much, Will. And Zach, um, I, I know you've got to take off, so I, um, maybe I'll hold Will for one more question, but okay. I'm going to let you go uh, to your meeting. And thank you so much again for joining with us. Uh, th thank you for having us. I just want to thank all, not just you, uh, Andrews, but your team and also the student body, because based on what we've heard today, you're really living up to the vision that Bill had for the school. And I know he uh, and, and as Will could speak for the family are incredibly grateful for that. So thank you. Thanks, Zach. Uh, Will, uh, one more one more question, um, and and I, I I didn't want to miss this one. Um, it's from Noreen Khan, uh, so um, who's going to be interning um, with you all with the foundation um, this summer? Um, question about the foundation, which will be great for you to share with everybody. A foundation's vision for the future regarding entrepreneurship. Uh, clearly, um, you talked before about Bill Carey being an amazing um, entrepreneur. Um, is there a potential of combining um, that philosophy with the um, business side and investing in startup accelerators that focus exclusively on social ventures um, to helping uplift communities like Baltimore? Yeah, thanks for the question, Noreen. Really, really looking forward to having you on board this summer. Um, we absolutely, I think that in, entrepre in, in entrepreneurship, it's, it's, uh, it's it's a unique area where you know oftentimes you're you're strapped with resources whether it's personnel or capital and figuring out ways that we can you know leverage uh, those areas um, and then also some sometimes there's basic challenges that can um, like how to enter into a new market a new country a new you know a, something that's new so figuring out how to uh, to provide resources there will be key and I, I think. Absolutely. There's a few ways that foundations also, unlike Bill during the beet farm, he, he wasn't able to, uh, when he was funding the beet farmers, wasn't able to, you know, use uh, financial structures to get uh, tax credits for them. The foundations are, are somewhat, have somewhat of an incentive, uh, have different programs where they're incentivized uh, to make uh, contributions to startup companies. Um, so it's something that I think that we'll try to uh, try to explore, and um, I think uh, with 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 you on board. So we look forward to it. Um, Thanks, um, Will. Yeah, appreciate that response. Appreciate you being with us uh, today and 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 sharing really the inspiration of of Bill Carey and and his legacy, and uh, and for all that you and the foundation do for the Carey Business School. Uh, so thanks so much, Will, for your time. Well, thank you. And thank you to the students, especially uh, you all are, are why we're here and why what we're so passionate about. So uh, it's really great. And I'm glad I could, you know, shed a little bit of light on on Bill Carey. Um, and and uh, and mainly thank you to, to you also, Dean Triantes, for um, carrying on this legacy and to Beat Week. And it's uh, it's incredible to see the great outcomes that are happening at Hopkins and Carey Business School. So thank you. Thanks so much, Will, and thank you to the audience that joined us and everybody enjoy their day. Thank you for those who also uh, donated as part of this uh, week of philanthropy and um, everybody enjoy the rest of Beat Week and take care. Bye-bye.